What's up producers, it's Aiden, aka Artsy from EDM Prod here. Today, I decided I would make a advanced drum programming tutorial for those of you who want a few more advanced tips. I made an advanced Ableton tips video in the past and a lot of you seem to enjoy it, so thought I'd continue that with a slightly different topic on obviously drum programming as I said. Um, there's a few gems in here, so if you want some more unique ways of making and writing drums for electronic music, then make sure you stick and watch the whole thing because you never know what might stick out to you. Let's jump into them straight away. So the first thing I want to talk about is more of a workflow technique and it's to layer your drums beforehand. Now, a lot of um, producers love to layer drums like kicks and snares or even other percussion just because it helps them get a more full sound or it helps them get a more unique sound. The problem is a lot of producers spend time in their actual tracks layering drums, which is fine if it's necessary, but to avoid getting into the technical work of that during the middle of a writing session, you want to kind of have your drums ready to go before and you can just drag and drop them when you're ready to do that. So let's um, make a little snare here by layering a few few samples together and we'll process them, etc. So I like the tail of this snare here. Um, and I want to layer that with something else. I'll bring down the volume to give myself a bit of headroom. Something like this with a bit more of a crack. Uh, let's turn this down. I'm going to shorten this one. I think I'm going to also fade out the transit. Maybe not as much. See if pitching it helps as well. I quite like that one. Adds a bit more tone to it. Let's see if there's any sort of uh, unique samples we can add to it as well. Might layer in like the tail end of this clap here, just for some extra texture, but very We'll also fade in the transient. It's going to also high pass anything we've got here. And I'll make sure it's in mono. Cool. Let's process these together. It's going to run them through a, um, uh, just some saturation. And then I'll turn it down after it woods. Cool. So basically now I've got this cool snare, right? And that took me a bit of work to get there. Maybe I'll... Yeah, whatever. I'll also... Hang on. Boost a bit of the highs in here. Especially on this one. Cool. So I'll resample this now. So let's set that to resample. Uh, cool. So now what I can do is I've turned this off. I've got a sample here. Um, I can export this, make sure you don't dither or anything, and call it cool snare. Now, if I um, add my desktop in for a second, always got this snare ready to go. Wait for it to load. It's always there. I don't have to make this snare every single time. And I'd really highly recommend doing that. It's basically the same thing as making samples from scratch in a similar way, like you're just layering other ones, but processing them. But you get these unique ones instead of, you know, whatever else. Yeah, anyway. So that's just a workflow tip that I'd highly recommend. 
So another thing I'd recommend as well, if you're using MIDI for something, is velocity randomization. Uh, I've talked about this before, I think, uh, in another video, but let's load up a um, like a hat or something. Uh, sweet, and then we can make like a little, I'm gonna change this BPM to like 80. Sweet, and then I'll draw in an example pattern. Just duplicate the notes over. Uh, and make sure to load in the sample. And we'll just add a little thing at the end here. Now it sounds pretty good, right? Um, Sounds pretty robotic though. So what I'll do is I'll go and add in a velocity and I can just randomize the velocity. And you can make it really subtle. You can make it quite extreme. I find about no more than 20 is nice. Uh, just because otherwise it sounds too unpredictable and it's not realistic. So it just helps it sound more human uh, if you're trying to go for a more human feel in your tracks. Uh, you can do this on multiple different elements. So for example, if we grouped this to a drum rack and then we added in extra samples. So like... Um, why is that doing that? Okay. Now it'll apply to all the velocity, but if we just want it to happen on one, it would be a matter of actually dragging it into the sampler and just putting it on the, the pad we want. So this crash one will stay the same velocity, whereas this one won't. So there's a few different ways you can do that. There's other things you can do with the velocity one to help control the dynamics of the MIDI, but I won't go into that too much now. Sweet, so for this third tip, I'm just gonna line up um, the snare here. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a drum loop to kind of fill out the background. Um, something. I don't know, something that will work. And then we're just going to warp it in time, which is a fairly standard thing to do with the drums, right? So I'm not going to go into too much depth with that. I'm going to also do this cool transients thing, which is another bonus tip for those of you out there. Maybe I'll... For this one, actually, I'll just use repitch and I'll... Uh high pass some of the stuff out of it. So one thing you can do, obviously this is a loop, but oh, it's a break. You can use like, I guess, odd timings for the loop so you can like have you know this is three beats or three quarter beats three eighth beats rather and you can do this with multiple different sam um like loop samples so If you drag in this one, you could like dun, 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 dun. And you get that unique offbeat feel with your drums.
Awesome. So this next tip is something I love to do. And it's a kind of a workflow hack for getting unique drums. Before we go anything, do anything further, rather, I'm just going to find a kick to add in. Just any kick will do for now. Um, yeah, that one will do. Yeah, I know my master's clipping, whatever. I'm just gonna chuck on a uh, glue compressor, just to soft look a bit. Cool. So we've obviously got a one bar loop here, right? Now I like to use something called the duplicate rule, uh, which is a rule I basically made up myself, which is you start with like a one bar loop or even a beat or something and I think a bar is an ideal place to start and you basically duplicate it and then every time you duplicate it, you have to make something different about that extra duplicate. So like... So, you know, there could be... You could set a rule for yourself like every time I have to change three things. It don't, you don't have to be that specific, but if, you, if that helps you. For example, I think... It would be cool to duplicate, have this little kick here and have maybe have it down so it kind of leads. And I want to reverse this little section here and then disable these. Just press zero. Maybe keep them going. Maybe have a bit more of a. All right, I'm happy with that. And then, for example, if we duplicate it again, now we're getting a bit bigger. We can bring it out here. So, for example, I might want this one to start like a. And then I could do, maybe bring that one there. Take everything out here. Maybe I want like a extra snare in there. Something like that. Maybe no crash there. Maybe I want to add in an element that only comes in this. Something like a ghost note, something like that. And then obviously we duplicate this and then now we're getting to that eight bar loop stage. Maybe. Add in like another. You know. Anyway, you get the point. And then you can keep doing that and then you can go and change certain sections and you can basically keep going and it's really fun. Another thing I'll do as well is I'll make a sound that's non-percussive and I'll make it percussive using uh, certain effects or whatever. So for example, this one. It's fairly percussive, but it's not quite there. I th firstly, I'll pitch it up and then I'm going to use the beats warp and change it to like 16th and I'll use that plucky thing before I used. You can go. And you get the movement in the original sound, but... You 
can duplicate it. You can also use auto pan to do something similar. Uh, turn the phase to zero so you don't get any phasing and make sure you're doing a synced one. And then you can get like weird offset rhythms. Like that, you might need to turn it up as a result. Yeah, and that's like a cool way you can do that with any sound and then get that texture from the sound in a percussive thing. You can also take parts out if you want, etc. It's up to you. So another really cool thing to do is to borrow techniques from other genres. So this is kind of like a hip hop, like future beat. I don't know. Whatever you want to call it. But um, for example, I might want to add in like a uh, something from another genre. So let's find like a 808 open hat. Um, see what I can find. That'll do. I don't know. There's no real difference. And then I'll use that whole offbeat hat idea. That's something you typically find in like house, but you know, we can apply it to hip hop and it kind of adds a nice vibe. Oh, maybe it was a 909 hat I wanted. Yeah, I'm thinking of the wrong hat. Yeah. And there, you know, like you could add in like an arm end break from from like a you know jungle or a drum and bass track. So like you could do that in like the last beat or something. So then like. Something like that, and uh, you play up, play with it, and figure it out, whatever. But you can apply those different techniques to get really unique drums. So I've kind of already shown this, but <laughs> rhythmic effects is a really cool way to, I don't know, spice things up a bit. So like we could take this shaker here. You could use something like a phaser, which adds a rhythm to the sound using the LFO. Turn the. And then you can like do that to multiple different elements. Yeah, it's really fun. Uh, one thing to do as well, I, it kind of keeps the drums interesting is, for example, you've got like a snare, right? You might want to um, just swap out a sample for a different snare, like just once off or something like that, just so like people aren't getting what their brain tells them they want all the time. Maybe something that kind of doesn't sound like a typical snare. Like maybe even like a rim. Something like that. J 
just so that way, you know, you're not always getting the same snare playing over and over again. It just kind of varies things up. I really, really like that. Uh, one thing I've started doing recently is using like a return track just for drum reverb. Um, I used to use returns and then I veered away from them a long time ago and then kind of started going back to them again recently. Uh, mostly because now you can export uh, like stems with um, the return applied to the signal, which is what I wanted and the reason I stopped using it. But um, the reason I, and then I, what I was doing is I was just applying reverb to like a bus, but now you can get way more control over it. So I'm going to load up something like um, Valhalla Room. and make sure it's on 100 wet. I'll just use the default preset to show you what I mean, but we can. And then you can just apply it to the hats. You don't have to apply it to the kick if you don't want. And that way you've got a lot more control over it. And you can also process this individually. So if we, you can just high pass it. You could add side chain from like the kick or something so that the kick, it doesn't like get in the way of the kick. Well, I've just chosen the snare, but. That's a really cool way. And that's why I like to use sends for reverb and stuff like that. Speaking on sidechain, you can sidechain the drums to each other. If you're like me and you're using like a lot of loops or elements that are kind of going on at the same time with the kick, you can just sidechain them. I'm just going to copy the same one. It might be a bit too intense for what's going on now. But hey, I just. Let's uh, go and replace that with this less intense one. And it just kind of uh, allows you to create more space for the kick. And you can also do the same thing for the snare. Uh, it just helps your drums and if you want your kicking your snare to really punch through at all times, even amongst the drums, it helps them for them to you know, stick out in the mix and always be there. Now, it goes without saying, but bus processing is really important with drums. Um, uh, you know, you're using samples and you're not recording them, it's kind of important to help glue things together. There's a couple of devices in Ableton, but you can use the, these aren't third party always necessary these aren't always um you can find these in third party rather solutions so like glue compressor is like the glue by cytomic in ableton version so you can get this as a third party plugin but it's really really good for um just gluing together drums so if you change the ratio to four and you just pull it back It brings out that side chain a bit much, which I would go back and change the side chain, but. Obviously it's a bit louder when I turn up the makeup game, but it really, really brings out all the life in the drums I find. Um, the other cool device is Drums Bus, um, which is cool, but it does kind of take out the high end a bit too much for my liking sometimes. Sometimes you just have to turn up this damp and then Sometimes dry wetting it as well. But you can get some really cool transient shaping. You can dry wet that signal with. the original and then you get like a cool texture um there's other things you can do like ott multi-band compression but 
it is important not to de- neglect the power of just gluing your drums together with compression and processing them together. Uh, whether that's also even just like EQ, like if you want to boost the lows of your drums. You can do that as well. So one cool thing to add, like, um, I guess a unique uh, take on your drums is to resample them and use that and then process it and then use that resampled version in a new, uh, I guess, case. So let's just go ahead and resample this here. I'll set this to resampling. That's enough for what I need to use it for. So I'm going to duplicate this whole loop again. This time, the thing I'm going to change at the beginning is the, uh, we'll take out all of these. We'll just use this resampled version. But the cool thing is, it sounds exactly the same, so it sounds seamless, but we can do really unique processing to this one to get it to sound like a certain way. So we could do like some cool filtering. Get like a lo-fi. And then you could like chop that one out there. And you can do cool stuff like that. Um, obviously, I'd play around with it a bit more, but yeah, it's really cool way to do it. Another thing um, I forgot to mention as well is that if you're using a loop, for example, like this one. You can, if you say, so let's um, consolidate this all together. You can sh- slice this to a new MIDI track using the built-in preset, um, or you can use one of these other ones. But you go one slice per transient, and then you get this new. And obviously, you can uh, copy over the effects. And then you can chop and change between different samples in here. Um, if you go back and you use the um, slice per uh, like 16th note, um, let's do that one, for example. Uh, and I'll copy over that. And then w- that way you get notes that are right on the grid. So let's... like cool glitchy things and you know you can go nuts essentially with like just you can basically even just make your own beat with the chops of the sample that way so it does help to have it warped on time before, but yeah. One last, second last thing I like to do is the reverse sweeps with certain samples. So like, um, for example, say this. Let's do this one. You can. Oh. Let's uh, make sure all of this is unwarped as well. For some reason, it's decided to warp them. Anyway. So. so you can drag this in and like get command. So you can drag it granularly. Turn down the volume of this sample. Also leave a little gap. 
to get like a um nice fade in kind of like and it gives it more impact on the transients. Make sure you give it a fade though, otherwise you'll get the click. Then it just kind of creates more tension with the drums. I really like to do that. All right, so um, for my last one, I thought I'd end on a workflow tip because I also started with one. So I'm going to use my track Inspire, which I made to demonstrate this. Now, this is the track if you guys listen to the podcast that we used to intro it. So that's why it sounds familiar. That's why. Um, but for this track, I started it off by actually beatboxing the rhythm, um, which is this track here. And if I turn off all the effects... So I just beatbox into my microphone and um, I ended up processing it and using it in the background of the drums and I use this main rhythm to kind of inspire the actual drum pattern and obviously the drums sound like this. And then kicks. Yeah, so basically just use your mouth to beatbox. You don't have to do what I did and use your actual voice in the final one. You can delete it. But the point is to get rhythms out of your head and down on, I guess, paper or in your door. Um, just beatbox and get it out of your head. And it gives you a good starting point, gives you something to recreate with samples. As you can see, I've just used a few different layers here, different samples, different loops to re replicate that. So yeah, um, that's one really cool way to work in your DAW. Awesome guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed these 15 tips for drum programming. If there's anything that you didn't quite understand, please leave a comment and we'll get back to you and answer your questions. Apart from that, have fun with these tips. Go and expand upon them. Let me know what your favorite drum techniques are as well. Uh, remember to subscribe for more videos and content from the EDM Prod team. Uh, like this video if you thought it was helpful and just share it with someone who you think will get help from these programming tips for drums. Sweet guys, well have a great week. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.